Welcome to Intro to Java with an emphasis on AP Computer Science A with Tokyo EdTech, that is me. Our topic today is arrays. So let's see what we're going to learn. Uh, we're going to learn how to create an array. And also, I'll probably tell you what an array is. Uh, we'll learn how to access and modify array elements, um, how to pre-populate arrays with certain values. These are called initializer lists. We'll talk about a very important topic, maybe again one of the more fundamental, most important topics in my opinion in uh, AP Computer Science especially is traversing an array, uh, traversing any type of collection. This comes up time and time and time again. There are three ways we can do that with a for loop, a while loop, or an enhanced for loop. And I'll talk a little bit about developing some basic algorithms with arrays. So let's go ahead and get started with the code. So here we go. Um, so creating an array. Well, first of all, what is an array? And so let me, let's say if we had some code like this, let's say score zero equals uh, you know, 34, uh, int score one equals, you know, doesn't matter, we'll say 45, uh, int score two equals, and we'll say 57. So let's say, you know, we had three scores. So if we have three scores up till now, we would need three variables. Now let's say you have a class of 100 students or some college classes or 1,000 students. You have to make a different variable for each of those. However, what we can do instead is to create an array, which is a group of you know, similar data types grouped into one organized structure. So let's go ahead and create an array of integers. Now watch what I do here. So int and square brackets. Where have you seen that before? Um, so int square brackets, we'll say scores equals new int. So it's a very similar to structure to what we've seen before, but a little bit different here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a seven there. And what that does, if I compile that, make sure it works. What that does is it creates an array with seven boxes, seven spaces. So if I did something like system, System.out.println scores zero. I'll just go ahead and put that in the next section. So how we access those boxes is by index. So if you recall from our string unit, indexes, indices always start at zero. So notice index one. So notice it's printing a value of zero. Okay, this is because I created an array of ints and the default value is zero. Again, if you look at the LinkedIn uh, ebook down below, uh, you can see a nice little graphic for that. So our indices are from zero is the first one and then six would be the last one because we start at zero. If I tried to do seven, compile it, I'll get an array index out of bounds, oops, array index out of bounds exception. Okay, and we saw that again in the strings unit. So now I can modify values. I can say scores, say zero equals, what, what did I have? 34 was it? Scores one equals, I think I have 45, and scores two equals, what is it, 57, we'll say. So now if I try to access by printing, I'll see these values, one, two, and three. Let's go ahead and compile that. And now you can see, so that's score zero before we modified it. You see that in the output. And then we modified it, and then we said score zero, scores one, score two. We're going to print those, and we get our 34, 45, and 57. So a couple comments about this. Once you have initialized the size of the array, you cannot change it. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, that's kind of a bummer. Um, so you really got to make sure you have enough space for all of the data. Uh, if you leave out the number, it will not compile. Okay, you'll get a Java error, dimension missing, array dimension missing, and it'll point to where it is. It tells you where the problem is. Okay, Java is very nice like that. You can initialize an array with a length of zero, meaning there's no elements can be put into it. So if you try to print or access, nothing exists. Okay. Um, and you would use that like in the case where you're using like a placeholder for your array and then later you'd 
assign it to a different one. Um, so yeah, so you gotta be careful with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to seven. And then again, there's no reason I chose seven, it's just a random number. Uh, now, so that is a case. So I could have done double scores equals new double, and then the default value would have been 0, 0.0. I could have been done Boolean, uh, you know, scores equals new Boolean, and the default value would have been false. So that is a way of creating an array. Um, you create a bunch of empty boxes, there's a default value, and then you can you know, modify those values as you wish. So there's another way of doing this with what's called an initializer list. Okay, so an initializer list would look something like this. So let's say, uh, let's do string, oops, don't forget square brackets, names equals, let me put some curly braces here. And let's go ahead and put, let's say we'll do Jen, uh, JR, and Scott, my old high school buddies. And so then if I go here and I say, you know, I'm just gonna copy this easier. Copy. And this is gonna be names. Copy. So you notice I can put strings in there, I can put ints, I can put I can put any type of object really. But I can also put uh, primitives. So you can see Jen is zero, JR is one, and Scott is index two. It's very, very cool. Um, just, just, you know, maybe it's kind of obvious, but just to make sure you, you're aware, I can do this. I could print scores uh, one plus scores two, and that would work as well. And you can see that comes out to 102. That's 45 plus 57 is 102. So there's a lot of things we can do with that. Um, yeah, so we can do all kinds of things. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. So you can either create an array with default values, you can create an array with kind of pre-populated values, but remember you can't change this, the size. So in this case, there are three items. I cannot add a fourth item, I cannot change that size. So traversing an array, this is where it gets a bit more, I think, useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and do int uh, ages equals, and we'll just put a bunch of ages in here. Uh, let's see, 17, 22, 19, 31, and 27, for example. So what we wanna do is we want to iterate through each one of these things. So just like we did with strings, it's gonna be for int i equals zero. i is less than. So what we're gonna use here is ages.length, and then i++. plus plus. Notice there is no parent there are no parentheses here. If this was if this was a, a string, we would use parentheses, but it's an array, so the length. In this case, the length is one, two, three, four, five. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four, and the length is five. So what we can do is go int age equals ages i. And you'll see this pattern over and over again. System.out.println age, just like we saw it with the strings unit. And if I compile this and run it, you'll see that all five were printed in the order they are in the uh, loop there, or in the array. We can do the same thing with while loops. I can do int i equals zero while i is less than ages.length, gth, oops. And I can do, I'm just gonna copy and paste this, make it easy, hopefully. And this is a while loop, don't forget the increment goes here. I'm gonna compile it, see what happens. So you can see we got that twice, and 1722. And just as a reminder, notice that even though I have int age here and int age here, it's okay because this int age is local to this uh, code block and this int age is local to this code block. Now our final one is our enhanced for loop and this we've seen this maybe a little bit before. 
So for int age colon ages. And how I read that in my head is for each age in the array ages, for each age in ages. And this is why I'm always really picky about uh, variable names. So notice this is plural, this is plural, uh, this is plural, but this is singular. If you keep to that pattern, your life's gonna be a lot easier. So system.out.println.h. So notice in this case, we're not using an index. Okay? It just automatically assigns it for us, starts at zero and goes all the way to the end. So if I run that, compile it and run it, you'll see it once again, I get the same output. So basically there's three different ways to do the same thing. Now, uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's very, very similar to uh, what we did with strings. So, we, you know, we could do stuff, you know, we could put some kind of condition if the age is greater than, you know, 18, so, or, or 20, or let's say greater than, greater than 19, um, that like 20 and above in Japan, then you say, hey, you can vote because your age is over uh, 19. 20 is the voting age here in Japan. So there are a lot of different types of standard algorithms. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will go over one here. Uh, again, the ebook has a, has a list of them that you, know, you might find useful, um, things that you might end up having to do. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. And I want to use scores again. Uh, scores, 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 uh, scores, scores scores and scores. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's say we have a list of scores uh, or an array, sorry. In, that's plural equals. Dun, dun, dun. And let's say we got 45, we got 85, 75, 97, good score there, 23, not so good there, 76. And so what we want to do is we, we want to find the maximum value in this, in this example. So how to approach a problem like this? Okay, the first thing is we know that we need to search every single value because the maximum value could be here. It could be here. It could be anywhere in between. So we do have to check all of them. This is an unsorted list. But we're looking for int max value. So what we would do here is we would go ahead and say, well, we know that it could be here. So I'm gonna say scores zero. And then I need to iterate through. This, this is what we're looking for, looking for. Then we're gonna iterate through, just like we did above. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a for loop, for int i equals uh, zero. I is less than scores.length, I plus plus. Again, this should just be basically ingrained in your brain. So then we're gonna go ahead and get int score equals scores I. And again, you could, you could skip that step if you know what you're doing. And so then what we're gonna do is check. So if the current score is greater than the max value, and we set the max value equal to the current score. Hopefully that makes sense. We do system.out.println max value plus, plus max value. Go ahead and compile that. Okay, so you see variable i is already defined because up here I have int i equals zero. So I could just take this out for now, or I could change it to j, whatever, whatever is better for you. And you see here it says max value 97. So just one thing about this. So we've got 45, so the max value is 45. So i equals zero, score equals scores i, which is 45. Is 45 greater than 45? No. Okay. We come back around, we look at 85. Score is 85. Is 85 greater than 45? Yes, it is. So we change the max value to 85. Come back around, we look at 75. 
Is 75 greater than 85? No, it's not. We come back around, is 97 greater than uh, 85? Yes, it is. We swap the value, so max value is now 97. We go look at 23, not greater than, look at 76, not greater than. So this is a pretty good solution. The only difference, I, the only change I would make here is that we have score zero. We know that there's no way score zero can be greater than score zero. They must be equal just by definition. So to make this just slightly more, in, slightly more efficient, instead of starting at zero here, I would start with one. Again, with a fast computer, it's not gonna make a difference, but just you wanna be as efficient as possible. We still get the same result, and we, you know, but we know our code is definitely more efficient. Now again, in the ebook, there are multiple different types of algorithms you should try to familiarize yourself with. You know, in some form or another, uh, one or more of them may come up on the AP exam if you are planning to take that. Uh, and it's also a good practice to, to get used to figuring these things out. This is, this is really what computer science is about, is, you know, finding algorithms to do things efficiently. That's kind of the core of it. Um, so you could do the same thing. A, a good exercise would be to do this with, try to find the minimum value and see if you can change the code to do that. You can try it with a, a, a for loop, or sorry, a while loop. You can try it with an enhanced for loop. You should be able to do it with all of those uh, pretty efficiently. So I think that's it for this unit. That's, that's about all there is. So we looked at how to create an array, uh, like an empty array with default values. We looked at accessing and modifying array elements. Talked about initializer lists, which is pre-populating the data. Uh, traversing an array using for, while, or enhanced for loops. And a little introduction to developing an algorithm. So you're kind of, you know, what do you look for first? You know, what are we looking for? You know, what is the condition where we would change it? And just kind of work, work your way through that kind of, you know, in your head a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.